for extending out and adding the breaks and titles with the raw footage. So I just opened up a session here. This is unit two, uh, six. So the first thing that I do, right click here and click add tracks. And I'm gonna add one video track, no audio tracks, and I'm going to do it before the first track. Now, the next thing that I need is a white mat, and I don't know if in this version of the session if there is one, let me see. Okay, th there isn't one. I'm going to right click, go to new item, color mat, 1920, 1080, good. Click OK. We want this to be white. Click OK. We'll call it white mat. I'm going to take that and just put it underneath everything. Now as I make any edits, I'll have white underneath. So let's say that I wanted to, let's see what this says. This is even more diverse. The ammunition vary from having a single projectile within it. Let's break down some of the terminology as well as components in common forms of ammunition. Okay, so let's say that I was extending this transition and I was going to say, maybe call it common terminology, something like that. So first I'm going to zoom in using the plus button here. And I'm going to get my cutting tool. Now I'm going to hit A, select everything to the right, then I'm going to hit V to get my arrow, and I'm going to extend this out. So now I have a spot that I could drop this title, but it's still black. So I'll pull this over, and I'm going to go back to C, and now I've got an area here that's white I can work with. So the next thing I'm going to do is go to File, New, Legacy Title. And for this I'll call it Common Terminology. I don't know if I spelled that right. Then I will type out, so make sure you do spell check it. Probably have some typos in there. Okay, so we want to get the right font here. Yes, yeah, Saunders hands. And now for the color. There is a hex key for the orange used. And I'll put that in a file with this tutorial. Click OK. Let's maybe recenter that. Here's my common terminology. Now, here's the other thing I've noticed. The default length there, I think it works pretty well. So here's what I'm going to do. Here's the other tip. So let's go back, select this. When you, again, clicking A to select all of those, if you drag that quite a ways away, then when you put this on, you can have kind of room to work with. So I'm going to drop that there, extend this to about here, then delete that gap. I'm going to click that and do a command D and there we go. Let's break down some of the terminology as well as components in common forms of ammunition. Okay. So that is good, but there's a few little things that we still want to fix. So one is it would be good to have him fade to white before we make that transition. So I am going to do a command D and that will give that fade out. I've noticed there's a quirk with, I've noticed a lot of quirks with Premiere, but this is one of them. Command D, okay, it worked. It worked this time. But sometimes when you do this, there'll be a weird, weird gap right here. So if that happens, an alternative way of making this transition is to click here where you want it to be in where we want it to be at 100% opacity go to your effects control under opacity drop down a keyframe then pull the timeline to the beginning 
and drags it to zero. Let's break down some of the terminology as. So now what we have is <laughs> this. A nice fade on. Let's break down some of the terminology. Now let's say that I've selected a piece of music for this. Let's say this was the piece that was underneath it. Right now it's too loud. It's maybe not too loud for the transition, but it's too loud for... ...to a shot shell containing dozens of small projectiles. So what I'm going to do, and this is generally what I would do on all these transitions, is add in some audio keyframes. Again, this is something Adobe could make so much easier. You should be able to just double click and add a keyframe. You can do it in Audition. You can't do it in here. It's a stupid feature. It's just so much faster than doing these stupid keyframes up here. I'm sure there's a shortcut for it, but just double click where you want the keyframe, Adobe. Make it so much faster. And if you want proof of what I'm talking about, this software does exactly that. You want a keyframe, you double click, boom, boom, boom. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Now, that's actually the reverse of the pattern we want. We want it lower here, lower here. Let's break down some of the terminology as well as components in common forms of ammunition. So there you go. That's the method. Any questions, let me know. Just a few more sh thoughts that I should add. First of all, we'd be changing this guy here from this side angle to camera one or whichever one is the, him looking at the camera. That's going to be our dominant angle. Now, when you're repeating this process, again, this whole thing is so much easier in Final Cut. But anyway, that's again another story for another day. But let's say that you were repeating the process. Now, you can get a little bit faster, and this is just random. I'm not actually doing it here, but if I, if I were. The other thing you want to look out for is, this can mess up with your timing on the, on the music, so you could, if you want to lock your music and then deal with that later. Sometimes I just throw it on there for reference. Anyway, so I click the A, right? Move that stuff over here. Move it quite a ways, right? Go back to the V, drop it down, okay, to my cut. It's command, uh, command C, Command V gets you a new one. So let's say this was new thingy, right? Now, where did it go? Your, oh, it's because I have this. Normally it'll just be right beneath it. So then you can drop down your new one. And so now that's ready to go. And then you click it, rename it. New thingy in this horribly slow, inefficient, stupid system that I have no idea why Premiere would think that this is a good idea. Because it's not. But anyway... Bought and shot, or a slug. Anyway, that was random, but you get the idea. So once you have one, you can, you can control and copy it. What they should do, if they were smart, is make this a hell of a lot easier to work with. And it's totally possible like if I'm working here in the software that I'm making this thing, it's so much easier to do virtually everything that you need for most practical edits. And I don't even use this software very often, but it's way more intuitive than Premiere and way faster. So if you needed to do a title, for example, you can just copy it here, put it where you want it, and then just boom, get in there and do what you want and edit it so quickly. I don't know. Premiere's outdated, in my opinion. Anyway, thanks, guys. And I know I probably sound tired, and I probably am tired, because I've only slept, like, I don't know, a few hours every night for the last week. But it's all good. Premiere's really not that terrible. It's just, there's so many things you do faster in Final Cut. Anyway, back to work. See you guys. Get me some jams. <laughs> Here comes a 
Joke on particle Space physics. Space time continue. Yeah, now give us a, just laugh. It's funny stuff. <laughs> okay, cool. That might be good just for having. And talk about what to do if you've noticed you've put a hole, uh, torn a hole into the space, into okay. space time. <laughs> while hunting, if you've put a hole in this, while hunting, if you've become aware that you've put a hole in the space time continuum, the first thing to remember is don't panic. The one rule about space is while you may have destroyed the entire universe, you're still okay. And thus, if you have destroyed your entire universe, you may come to a parallel one, which might be slightly different, and you can go back on living. 